Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Chimera Squad. <coughs> My name is Saiken and we're playing Impossible Iron Man Hardcore. Where we are uh, playing with a single save and uh, once a mission is lost, the entire run is gone on the highest difficulty. Uh, last time that we lost, uh, that we left off, we just finished our third mission. So today we got another quote unquote off day where we just need to defend the city. As you can see, our Vigilance, um, which is the ability to reduce unrest, is on cooldown. For the next ability, we need at least four field teams. And thank us for uh, really collecting so much intel. So let's uh, field some more field teams. One for finance. So we now got a finance and... Um, an intel team and I am thinking about since we had uh, a finance and an intel team to get another intel team right away so our top rank uh, will be intel only the middle section will be finance and the bottom section will be Hilarium. we only got 30 more intel so that's in not enough to really do anything and let's see what our options are we could either directly go to um, the rescue mission for the compromised technician. So that would give us quite a bit of credits and definitely uh, get rid of the unrest here. Or alternatively, we're co um, contacting the scavenger market or just get uh, 65 um, credits. The problem is if we take either of these missions, unrest will further spiral out of control. So it's really a question of how fast do you want to do the main missions. In my perspective, uh, a good trade-off is whenever you think that either of uh, these benefits is really, really outweighing what you uh, would need to do, then go for it. But since we're only losing 30 um, credits between both of them, I will go for the mission. Uh, the uh, scavenger market is good but um, it will cost additional intel and currently we're just uh, placing all of the field teams so uh, too early for the scavenger market let's instead go with the compromised technician minus two unrest and 35 credits oh wait a second um, we got an idle operative well I've thought I would have uh, put Axiom onto further spec ops, but I clearly didn't do that. So he's continuing to do um, just research for now. One of the things that we could uh, think about is also getting more money. Uh, that would help us with our equipment. But I think I want to this time rush for maximum intel to just populate the entire city um, and benefit from the regular inflow of resources. Good. Let's go and rescue the technician. So, you know how it goes. Focus on any hostile who threatens your VIP. Get them to safety as soon as you can. Good. We're looking for three encounters. We got a couple of entry points here: secure door, door, window, and ladder. Uh, meaning probably our breach charge will not be used, but. I still think we're going to be fine. The team is absolutely fine, so let's jump right into the mission and give it a go, guys. Next technician realized her side project was backed by the progeny. And when she called reclamation, the progeny came to collect. It's almost like they read her... Okay, wait, they did most likely read her mind. <laughs> Good. So what are the options? Successful shots on enemies will stun. That is always very good. I like the defense bonus, which is also good. And we got uh, guaranteed landed shots. Last unit through the entrance is marked until the end of the turn. Oh, well, the marking is not so hard, but we can circum uh, circumvent and get around that. Um, I like the defense. which I think we're going to give to Verge. I like the stun part, which I think we're going to give to Terminal. And this time 
Sherop here will go in last. We're probably going to take some shots. Um, one option that we could alternatively do is we could benefit from his failings and just put everyone through uh, this door here. That would deny us the bony, but we would not take any damage. We do have two encounters here and failings only works once. So I would say we're not going for failings um, because we're going to save it for the second encounter. Good, let's take a look. We do have a thrall right here, one uh, that we can deal with. We got a thrall right there. And we got an Archolite right uh, right there. Okay, fair enough. So let's deal with the Thrall first because we can kill him with a single shot. There we go. One unconscious. We need five. Keep uh, keep that in mind. Uh, we could uh, we could ensure that the Archolite is uh, being uh, knocked uh, uh, being knocked stunned, or we're taking out the Thrall with the shotgun. I think we're focusing with the Thrall because the shotgun actually is quite nasty when it hits. So let's take secure shots here and again focus on the Thrall. There we go, two unconscious, that's good. And we got the Archolite. I mean, he's going to take a shot, but it won't be the end of the world. Uh, are we going to use Phalanx or are we not going to use it? Hmm. Nah, I think we're fine. We can take a hit if that would be necessary. And it's not even sure that he hits us. Well, he does, but okay, whatever. Point still stands, I think it was not a mistake. Good, so that's encounter one out of three. Um, I think it was the right decision not to intervene. Let us take out this Archolite over here. There we go, solidly stunned. Just like we wanted it. And... I was hoping that we could actually kill this Archolite. As she directs. Now we're probably going to take a soul fire. Moderate damage for us, which is unfortunate, but we were unlucky with hitting them. Good. This is uh, where our um, where our specialist terminal really shines because with her safeguarding we can simply out heal the enemy once we have uh, cleared the battlefield quite a bit we should be fine there's a chance that we critically hit the archolite but it's unlikely that we kill him yeah worst possible outcome the grazing shots so we're taking more damage another assault fire oh even worse a surplus, uh, which means we lost our cover. So we definitely got to deal with that. We got a couple of other problems at our hand. The resonant here will be able to flank us, which means we got to deal something about. Oh, we got to do something about it. We got to move. And let's go for the Archolite here. Ah, uh, 40% is not good enough. Uh, it's just not... I can't see a justification for doing that. We could go for the Resonant, but again, that's a 50-50 gamble. Uh, if we were to... shoot the Arcolite, we're at 70%. So let's clean up the battlefield. Wow. He's a dodgy beast. It's the second time that he uh, that he dodges us. The Psydomain is definitely 
a bit more nasty. Uh, mainly because everyone, every enemy Psyker now has an additional uh, point of damage that he can deal. We're going to use our Kinetic Shield. Let's early um, uh, invest our time for the Mad Kit. Um, it's well invested uh, time, so it's not wasted. And let us... Take out this Arcolite because now their Soul Fire deals uh, not only three but up to four points of damage, which we certainly do not want to happen. We got ourselves a Kinetic Shield, so we should be fine, but there are still two Arcolites out here. Our Kinetic Shield is down. Good, we're being dropped to the ground. That deals two to three points of damage. Four thanks to Psy Domain. Great. Wonderful. And I really think we need to control the enemy uh, the enemy. Elsewise this here is gonna be a problem soon. Down to three hit points, we definitely need to heal. And thanks to our safeguard ability, even taking damage, Thank it's not the end of the world. I mentioned that earlier. And we can set the resonant up uh, for a kill. So Arcolite is taken out. Now it is our chance to deal with resonance. Let's take the secure kill first. Definitely did not work as expected. Second time is the charm. We took out all of the psychers and now only the resonance are left over. Again, shield on ourselves. Kinetic shield. And let's go for the... I wanted to go for the Arcolite, but we're out of movement. So, gotta be the Resonant. Let me try again. Battle Madness. So we maybe get some extra damage out of uh, him. He will now shoot his friend. Or not, because he resists it. All right, moving up. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll play it safe, uh, mm, even if we take damage now, I'll just stall another round and heal everyone up. It shouldn't be a problem. I have not noticed uh, that we had an injured uh, mm, soldier. Good. This here... Now nah, it could theoretically knock him out. I don't want that. Instead, let's overwatch and finish him next turn. We're kinetic shielding terminal. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the healing. Reload, Overwatch, and Terminal can heal herself. Which brings her almost to full, good enough for the next room.
I can do that. And like I said, Overwatch, uh, when it's triggered now, is always going to hit. So that was a solid first room. We are slightly damaged, but we should be fine. This is the only place in the city authorized to expand on Codex research. Uh, you have a very different sense of what is interesting. Good, time for breach mode. Ah, damn it. Uh, the, I should have uh, used phalanx before because now phalanx will not be as useful. Unit that jumps forward uh, follows... Um, unit jumps forward to directly follow the previous agent's turn. That's great. Let's do this here. Successful shots on enemies will crit. That's even better. Blue blood. Stunning shot. Yes. And I think we're going to be fine. So first, uh, let's use him. And that should be our order. Stay behind me. Breach, breach. The level design is definitely random. I can't remember playing that um, map the last time. We're st still trying to do the phalanx here. Let's see if we can absorb sh uh, some of the shots. So there is an aggressive thrall here, an Arcolite. And uh, a Revenant. Let's start with the obvious targets. We're going with a Thrall. There we go. So he's going to stun. Nice little crit. And Phalanx has taken some of the shots, the other simply missed, which is good. That is a problem. We definitely don't want Psy Domain uh, to happen. And we got an extra option here with, uh, the, uh, with the evidence that we can collect. Good. Advantage is on our side. Let's move in with the Kinetic Shield. Yeah, this here is definitely the best move. Two for the price of one. Very nice. Good AoE damage. Let's start with taking out the Arcolite. Because I definitely don't want the extra damage. That's good. The stun is super helpful. And we might even kill the Thrall. Nope, 70% is a miss. Cover in this game explodes much easier. I noticed that already. Which I think overall is a uh, refreshing change to, uh, to the Long War that I was playing beforehand. Where cover is essentially almost indestructible. So I was very welcoming with that. Um, could go for another sweep here, but even more important, what we can do is we can put the verge back onto our um, back onto our uh, front line. Thanks to team up, can use that. Um, There's no reason not to use our flashbang. Flash. It's a free action. 
There we go. We're healing ourselves just to top our uh, top us off. And then let's try to kill the thrall. Easy enough. All right, trying to manipulate the others. Fortunately, that's a resist. Can't win them all. But thanks to the additional people in the neural network, his hit chance is now 80%, which is absolutely great. Birch is taking some damage. But we can deal with that. Um, All right, moving over here, mainly because I want to deal with that Revenant and I want to get the evidence. We're protecting Verge, thanks to the Kinetic Shield, that should not be a problem. So he's very well protected for next round. And we take out the psychers and now it's a matter of just running it down. Let's get your insides back inside. Birch is being healed, and you can already see the strengths of the team. Uh, the crowd control as well as the damage negation uh, options are making it very easy. Once you have more hit points, um, it's essentially even easier than that. Trying to take take away his actions. He's definitely dead now. I don't see how he can come back from that. Good, we got the evidence. And we got everyone. I think most of them are even unconscious. So, last encounter. It's cube farm. Lots of open space and thin walls. Sounds like we should find some high ground. Love it. Another breach mode. Secure entrance or uh, being marked. Well, that's a pretty simple um, decision, really. Let's go in with Verge next. And here we go. It's go time. We got ourselves some high ground and none of the enemies uh, actually can react to us. Resonant, two Archolites, a Thrall, another Thrall. Another Archolite over there and another Thrall. We would definitely go for the Archolites, there's not even a question. Alright, so that'll take out two of the Archolites right away. We got the high ground and only one of the Archolites is left and one resonant. The thralls really don't matter all too much. So I definitely like the high ground. However, we know we need to. I know we need to escape uh, through here later. 
So might as well start making our way to there. The Thrall is going to act next. We overall got a height advantage of 20, uh, which makes our shots really easy to hit. And that is to be weighted off with uh, being able to flank the um, resonant. I think we can put her down here into safety. We won't be able to... Well, we could theoretically kill one of the Thralls. So it's not an accurate statement that we couldn't go with the Resonant. But I want to get the Resonant down first. I was actually hoping for a bit more damage um, and a hit. Okay, luckily for us, we can now uh, move into different cover. Problem is we can't move and shoot and crowd control. That's unfortunately not possible. But what we can do is... We can take his action. Good enough. And move back into cover. Good. Now, time to shine. Let's start with the Arcolite, really. It's a 50-50, the others are 75% shots. Hmm. Do we want to risk taking more damage? Probably not, to be honest. I'll take I'll take the 50-50. Arcolite's soul fire is a problem. On the other hand, getting rid of the thralls right away will make it easier. No, let's stick with the first plan. I like the Arcolite, um, and now that he has lost his cover, 80%, there we go. That was the correct decision. Birch takes some additional kinetic shield. We could go down. But we don't have kinetic shield ourselves. What we could, can do though is we can hit one of them. Probably not the wisest decision in melee. We we do have cover up here. So it's one of uh, the times where just taking a shot even if it does not kill him is the better selection. The Resonant has no targets to, uh, to uh, actually support so he's starting to heal. Which I am fine with. Gremlin it's fine. Appreciate it. We got two options. I think the Resonant is still the better option for a kill. Although, of course, taking out uh, the Thrall here would reduce the damage. To yeah, let's take the Thrall. I was hoping, because the Thrall acts first at, and now can take shots back, so I was hoping that we could uh, make, um, that we could profit from taking him out immediately. Didn't work as expected. Alright, she takes take some damage, but we're definitely fine. I like to take out the Thrall first. Continue taking out the Resonant. Very good. No more healing for them. 
He can flank us, but we do have kinetic shield. Well, of course, not on Cherub, so that was actually not a bad move. Getting him down, that's one down. And getting him down, that's almost two down. We are kinetic shielding ourselves. And let's take a shot at the thrall. Not a kill. We're healing up. Need a little help? Sheriff is almost full again and he has a kinetic shield around him, so I'm not terribly afraid of him going down. Quite the opposite. Got a nice little flanking shot there. See how she floats. Kinetic shield is down. And time to take off a thrall. I'm nearly dry. Good to go. Good. We're soon going to see reinforcements. So it's a good timing for us to, I think. Yeah, that's enough to drop down. I think he's at the right position. So that's fine. Preparation. And Shirop here will go and handle the VIP. This thing is nearly empty. Terminal heals Shirop, and I think we're reloading. As soon as we got the VIP, uh, we need to get out of here. Overwatch. Reload Ammunition restored. and Overwatch. I can see everything. And Shirop gets the VIP. And I wasn't wrong. We need to evac everyone. So moving directly over here. Shirop moves as well. Enemies will come from there. I think there is no other place where they were coming from. Oh, over here. I've almost forgot about that. I'll shoot anything that moves. We need you to cover us. Good, so we got the entrance very well covered. VIP just dashes out of here, cheer up will follow, and we're going to be fine. Do you know it? All right, cheer up is moving over here. Next turn we can move out. Trying to get rid of the enemies, really. And there we go. Perfect.
So we're now moving everyone out because when the reinforcements are coming in, we um, they cannot take shots immediately. So that's there's no uh, long war style reinforcements plus Overwatch. We we can simply uh, evoc everyone. On the other hand, with increasing amount of enemies coming in, we can't just stay here forever. At some point, we just need to go out. These reinforcements are still very, very easy to <clears throat> get by, but it's just a matter of time until they will become more and more difficult. Alright, time for us to go. XP, as far as I'm concerned, is not determined by the amount of enemies. So it's really just mission XP, uh, but I cannot say that for sure yet. Again, we got our 20 extra intel because we had enough um, unconscious enemies. So the whole uh, purchasing of tra uh, train grounds at the beginning of the campaign really starts to pay out. We, every single mission that we had earned us 20 extra intel. Great, and look at that, we got three additional promotions. Not sure why it isn't four. First things first, we can add a new agent. So it's our sixth agent. And we got three really interesting agents here. We got Torque, um, super interesting character. One of my favorite characters just uh, from the style. She's a Viper. Um, I don't... 100% like her personality, but that's a personal taste. Her combat abilities are definitely interesting. She has a tongue pull ability, uh, which she can use for friendly and for enemy uh, units. So great for just general combat relocation. Um, uh, she has poison as an ability and she got an ability called bind, where she takes herself and the enemy out um, continuously and essentially kills the enemy by just strangling it to death, which isn't bad in these uh, small skirmishes. It uh, means that you can just take a single enemy and completely wipe him off. I like Shelter. I um, haven't 100% played with him all too much yet. Uh, very supportive character and I am uh, on the edge of maybe taking him, but we already have a lot of uh, support characters. And we got Godmother, um, basically a very um, Alpha Strike um, ambush uh, based um, uh, character. Um, she has AoE abilities and is a damage dealer. Um, but uh, again, I also don't have so much experience with her yet played mainly with uh, Torque, so uh, might be a good option to either take Shelter or Godmother. We have a frontline character, uh, maybe we should take another um, uh, support. Um, I actually really would like to play uh, with Torque, she was great. You know what, let's go with uh, Shelter, it's fine. Good, we got three promotions. Uh, mm, Terminal has her first promotion to field agent, so we can either take uh, Sustain, which uh, means that she's not going to die, but instead is going to reduce to one hit point, or Terminal Shots uh, mm, uh, non-damaging uh, suppressive fire at a target to push their turn down the timeline, which isn't bad either. Um, I went uh, with uh, Sustain the last time just to make it safer and give uh, give me that extra cushion. I needed it once overall, so it wasn't completely wasted. But other than that, I felt in many of uh, the in many of the scenarios I couldn't really do a, a hell lot of it. Um, I am wondering whether or not. Uh, pin down will end your turn. I don't know that yet, but um, 
I think it's a good option to find out. I know that sustain is okay. It's an okay ability. Uh, I will try pin down on this um, run through uh, to get an opinion um, if that is better. So we got two um, abilities here. Number one, guard at the end of uh, your turn, uh, gain plus one armor. Uh, half cover bonus even if flanked and become half cover for friendlies. I absolutely love the ability because it allows you to uh, go in, still take half cover and always have that uh, one armor. So very, very front line. Um, the other ability we, uh, would generate one charge at the end of each encounter. That's fine. So you are always starting with a charge. But given that he has the failings um, ability to uh, uh, to breach in, oftentimes um, he already has a charge. So I will definitely, again, go with the guard uh, section, just like uh, in my test playthrough. Uh, that was 100% uh, successful. Um, over here we got two abilities uh, for Blue Blood. Number one is uh, the first shot in each clip disorients the target. That's what I've taken the last time. Uh, disorientation, specifically in psi active uh, enemies, is super helpful and gives you options like, um, let's say, reloading and then shooting in order to disorient an enemy. Ever vigilant, Blue Blood automatically activates Overwatch if the last action of their turn is spent moving, including using abilities uh, that can um, provide movement such as subdue or stabilize. Hmm. Also, not a bad option because uh, I one of the things that I came across with playing uh, with uh, Blue Blood was I really did not like to move a lot. And I found myself um, oftentimes in a situation where I could have moved into a better position, um, but didn't do it and instead took a, a suboptimal shot. So I want to try Ever Vigilant this run. Um, I was not 100% convinced with Warm Welcome. It was an okay ability, but really his ability starts um, from his special agent and senior agent trait, which is going to be his ultimate, much, much better. Hey, Shelter. That's not so bad. I don't need my psionics to tell you're lying. Not lying, just morale building. I'll make do. Anything good to eat? I saved some chili for you. A red bowl in the fridge. Now that's morale building. Good. Let's see. We got a uh, shelter over here. And yeah, he doesn't have any of his uh, abilities unlocked. Uh, what what he can do so far is essentially swapping his position uh, his position with an enemy or an ally, which I personally like because it allows you to model the uh, battlefield quite a bit. Uh, and in some of the cases, it's uh, it's helpful getting someone in or out. Uh, certainly um, helps specifically if you need to flee a combat scene. Good. We got an extra agent who would be considered to be idle. Now here's the deal. One of the first things that I like to do is essentially get the training in. Um, and uh, who was the only one who did not get a promotion? I think it was, I think it was our psionic uh, character Verge. Let's see. I, yeah, he was the only one not getting a promotion, so he'll definitely stay on the team. Anyone else is um, could theoretically go off the team for now. Mm, I would say, yeah, let's use terminal, and she can train. Giving her or taking her off the team will uh, remove our ability to heal quite a bit, but that's fine. We can purchase uh, uh, purchase uh, med kits. Um, the basic conditioning, I personally like it a lot. It increases your hit points by two permanently, and I would recommend as soon as you do have the option, uh, go for it. So Shelter is going to join us uh, for a bit. I would put Shelter in the support uh, category. Uh, which means uh, we are also color coding him. There you go. Creature. Okay. We still need supplies. 
We, I talked about med kits. Let's take one additional med kit and take a look at uh, the city map. Progeny fleeing the scene seem to vanish. Figure out how they manage this magic trick. Good. That's our next uh, big target. Six days. We need to find out where the progeny is really hiding. A um, couple of things that we do have available. We almost got quarantine. Uh, we only need one more field team, and luckily we do have 50 intel, which is just enough to purchase uh, mm, or another field team. This time uh, an Elarium field team, as you can see. Once you purchase the field teams, uh, it gets more expensive. So we do have two intel field teams, uh, so it rises from 50 to 65 to 80 to, um, I think, 100 afterwards, and that's... Um, basically preventing you to just go into uh, or dive into one um, element too deep. We now got a new ability which is called Freeze. And Freeze essentially um, uh, does exactly what the name suggests. It freezes the, um, the uh, development of unrest. So let's take a look which mission we're taking. We either can take uh, 65 uh, credits, that's okay I would say. We got a bomb mission here, uh, reducing unrest, which is always great. Expanded weapon magazine is good. I like that as an option. So that is cool. We got minus unrest, 30 credits, and operation reveal. Hmm. Tough one. Um, we could freeze uh, this here without losing um, too much could go to the bomb threat um, and minus two on uh, on the unrest here essentially means we're back to one freezing it means we're also back to one so that's uh, three plus two plus another uh, two so we're looking at seven prevented uh, unrest that's always how i look at it what's kind of the best unrest play and and is the reward worth it? And the expanded magazine, generally weapon mods are uh, pretty good, so I would say we're freezing the unrest here. And we're going into the bomb threat mission next. Um, but that's going to happen in our next mission. I can already see we're a bit over time. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen uh, so far. Uh, if you liked what you've seen, leave a comment down below and um, uh, don't forget to like the video. I would appreciate that a lot. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.